Dang, I was muted this entire time. <laughs> wow. That's a shame. But hey, shout out to Diamond Bavel, master poet of the UK. That's important. Live audience needs to be in, in, in attendance so that when logistics mess up like that, you know, we are, we're able to recuperate, you know, better late or better early enough than later. Right. And so, <clears throat> again, with an intro. Welcome. I'm your host, Fernando Caro. Welcome to the new breed. If you're new to uh, YouTube, if you're new to watching my videos, maybe you looked up how to resolve inner conflict and you came onto my show and you're like, what is this? What is he talking about? Who is this guy? Why is he wearing a hat? What's in his background? What's this shrine thing? What's on his necklace? Why does he sound like that? Right? All these judgments. <laughs> you got to be judging. Like, what am I watching right now? Who is this guy? Does he make sense? Good. Judge me. I'm here for you to have your judgment of my expression, of the topics, of these conversations. Now, this is my platform, and this is my judgment. This is my word to the world. Okay. So welcome to the new breed for all previous recordings. You go on IMC TV, you subscribe, you like them, and you can find my show, the new breed on here. Okay. So let's get started. How to resolve inner conflict, right? Well, let's describe that. Let's talk about it a little bit. Inner conflict. What, 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 what do we mean by inner conflict? That's probably not even a concept that comes up to your mind. You're not thinking, right? You're living your life and you're like, oh, I have an inner conflict right now, right? Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I'm having some sort of inner conflict. You don't, we don't have that kind of conversation. But the kind of conversations or the kind of <clears throat> realizations that one has is like, hey, I'm really fucking pissed right now. That's an inner conflict. Or, you know, I'm just really fucking depressed or I'm sad or I have some sort of problem anxiety right that's an inner conflict or the feeling of like you're missing out right FOMO people have these things fear of missing out there's an inner conflict with self you want to know why you want to know why you have an inner conflict well there's many reasons but let me let me share with this basic premise we're going to start with this idea of why there's an inner conflict in self. First, before I answer that, before that why, is there has to be an understanding that you're having some conflict with you. There's inner and then there's outer conflict. Outer conflict would be wherever you're at right now in life. Something exterior of you happens, meaning let's just say I'm here in my room and a male fucking lion, big ass male lion, right? Alpha male lion comes to my door. He breaks my door down. He's, he, I could hear him running towards my room. Hey, I got a fucking problem. That's not an inner conflict. I got an outer conflict right now, right? That, I'm about to fight or flight right now. That's some real problem. Or let's say now that I say flight, you're on an airplane. And oh, I hate this experience, man. Uh, you're in an airplane. And then there's turbulence, right? If you've ever felt that, oh, it's one of the most horrific feelings ever, right? You're in an airplane and that thing, you just feel like, you're like, oh, dude, come on, man. Are you serious, bro? Are you serious? And then you start to like, it starts to shake and rattle. Like you feel that dip in your body, like your your belly just sinks to the ground. And you're like, oh, fuck, bro. Is this it? You start to have thoughts like, am I going to die right now? Like, seriously, you contemplate your own death. You're like, fuck, man, is this really how it's going to end? Dang, I know that feeling. Now, that's an outer conflict. Or you could be like, well, you're having an inner conflict. That's true, I am. That's, that's what we're talking about. But in that moment, there's something exterior of me that I have zero control over. I have zero control over. I got a problem right now. Let's say that plane is falling and crashing. Well, shit, man. Okay, those are external problems. Like there's some real problems in life where your life is in danger or, or things are happening in your life where you're, you're not sure how you're going to survive, right? There's a lot of that. But let's take a look over here on this aspect, the inner side, because that's a side that's usually neglected. That's a side that we don't really take a, an analysis on. 
Like, why am I fucked up today? What the fuck? I know for a fact I'm just trying to have a good day. But there just seems to be like some glue, some dark mesh that just seems to be gripping onto you. And you can't seem to let it go, right? You have all these fucking ideas. You have this belief that there's something much bigger and grander. But yet, it just seems like you just can't get out of a fucking condition. And so, we have to realize we're having some sort of inner problem. So now let's get back to the why. Why are we having these things? Well, reality check. First and foremost, we got to begin with selves. Recognizing, then being able to ask the question, hey, why am I fucked up right now? And you just sit there and ask you, like, why are you fucked up right now? If you're listening to this, like, why why are you not feeling good? Like, if I check my own state right now, damn, I must feel good to be able to speak and talk, share ideas. I'm outside of me. I'm not stuck in me. You're having an inner conflict because you're stuck in here. You're having some little personal problem. Your ego got hit, and now you have some, uh, some something stuck on you. Right? We got to be able to see it. Like, if we just really ask the question right now, why is it that every fucking day you have some voice in your head that just seems to keep nagging, nagging at you? You want to go to the gym because you know it's the right thing to do? But then there's like this little fucking voice in your fucking head that seems to say, you know, no, nah, you know, I'm tired today, or I'm not feeling too good, or my leg hurts, my foot hurts, or there just seems to be this little complaint in your fucking head. You know that voice? That complaining motherfucker in your head? It just seems to always give complaints. Hey, shut up. Like, shut the fuck up, actually. Like, just shut the fuck up. Right? Like, for example, like to the, in two hours, three hours, <clears throat> I'm going to be at kickboxing. Inside of my system right now, any voice that has some sort of bitch-assness about going today needs to just shut the fuck up. Why? Because I'm going regardless. Now, who's this other voice that says, you're going regardless? I don't give a fuck how you feel about it. You're going to go. Why? Because when you go, you're going to feel better. You're going to get stronger. You're going to evolve. Your practice is going to refine. And then who's the other voice that has some sort of complaint? Who the fuck is that guy? It's like Conor McGregor. Who the fuck is that guy? And if you just pay attention all day, there's some sort of voice in the head, one that either has a complaint, and then there's this other voice that we need to take a look at. Because I hear the other guy, but every day becomes less and less and less. It becomes faint. Distant. I can barely hear him. It's like, hello, 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 hello. Right? His voice is so little. The voice of complaint. The voice of some sort of victim, right? Oh, that's so gross. Hey, the quality of a victim is so ugly. It's so ugly to be a complainer, a, a person with so much problems. But that's the whole world as I look everywhere. Everybody seems to have some sort of complaint. Hey, man, newsflash. I get you're going through some things. But so am I. So is him. So is her. So is they. So is she. So is he. So is every fucking body, actually. Everybody's going through some internal turmoil, some internal bullshit or external, whatever the fuck. 
right? Everybody's going through some things. And what we started to see people do, maybe that's you, is to say, well, I'm going through more, so I should get more attention. Like people now push their, their victimhood as some sort of status, as some sort of, you should feel more bad for me because I'm more fucked up. And I'm not saying I'm, I, I don't feel for people. Of course, I have the most empathy. And as I continue to evolve, I have more of it, right? But it's not like everywhere I go, I'm feeling bad for the world. No, 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 no. I don't even want to feel bad for me. What a disappointment. Why the fuck would I feel bad for me? No, I think it's fucking dope. All the shit that I go through. I think it's so courageous to see how you show up every fucking day. First, starting the moment you wake up. Ah. So my question to you is, when you wake up, do you show up to life as if this is the greatest existence and opportunity? Like whatever it is that you're facing, whatever it is your life is, right? You're going through some things in life right now, right? Good. Do you wake up? No, you don't actually. Let me say it like this. If you don't wake up saying and looking at life, bring me this shit. Hey, this is my fucking story. Wherever it is that I am in life right now, if I work this fucking job, but I hate this job and I know one day I'm going to make millions of dollars or I hate my fucking body, but one day I'm going to create and sculpt a beautiful creation that one day, hey, I hate the people or I don't even want to use the word hate. That sounds so, you dislike, you, you want to change your condition. You want to change your experience of life. You want to get out of a shitty fucking relationship. You're tired of having weak ass bullshit thoughts. You're sick and exhausted of having a mediocre, pathetic ass, weak ass experience of life, right? And you're like, fuck, man, why don't I have any energy? Why don't I have any energy? To do shit. Hey, good. Till you get there, and I'm not saying you should get there. I'm saying if you're there, because chances are you fucking are. At some extreme, at some point, you're disappointed at some part of your life. You could have all the money in the world, but you're fucking miserable in relationships. You have a bunch of relationships, but you're fucking miserable because you don't have a relationship with you. You have a relationship with you, hey, nobody fucking seems to understand you. At some which way of the coin, you're on some, some <laughs> exchange with the world. At some point, you might be winning and succeeding. At another point in your life, you're fucked up. Right? Like, we know for a fact that when we see someone who's not healthy, meaning they're fucking fat, they're sloppy, and we see the fat, sloppy person eating a bunch of junk food, at some point, we're going to be like, hey, bro, what the fuck, huh? What the fuck, bro? What do you mean? What do you mean you're going to eat another piece of junk food, bro? Like, at what point, at what point do you decide enough's a fuck enough, dude? Your stomach is touching the floor. At what point does someone say, bro, what is wrong with you? Not in that sense, but in the, in the sense that I'm not going to go up to the fat person and be like, bro, what's wrong with you? Fucking fat. I'm not saying that. I'm saying psychologically, at what point does the person finally make a fucking change? At what point do you finally decide to change your condition? What the fuck? You can't, you can't, we, you, it, look, man. I don't care what you have if you can't seem to take care of your own physical body. Like if our parents are sloppy and fat, hey, it's going to be very difficult to take their suggestions about life. Like, hey, son, I think you should, you know, train some more and go to the gym. But dad, you look fat and sloppy. Well, I'm 80 years old. I don't care, dad. 
If that's your philosophy, then you should still be living your philosophy. I know 80 year olds that, you know, go to the park and have abs and ripped. I've seen 80 year olds who are master yogis who can bend in ways that, you know, that a young baby can move. What's your excuse? Right? Everybody's giving advice, but when we look at them, we have to measure their physicality. Now, let's just say you're watching this and you decide, hey, I know I'm not physically, you know, a, a, at a perfect state, but I'm today's day one and I'm working towards it. At that point, when someone finally decides to make a change in their life and they no longer, they resist, they, they disown, they're done, they, that old part of them is dead. When they finally decide to make a change, you cannot fucking, uh, don't just, do not talk shit about the person who's making the change. Why? Hey, they're making a change. Fuck you, man. Let the person make a change. And if it's for the better of them, it improves life, it improves them, then congratulations. Right? We see the fat person making a change. Good for you, man. If he wants to fucking do dance and fucking body lift and body build and yoga, he wants to martial arts, hey, let him do his shit. Yeah. Same thing with the female. Let her do her shit for sure. But it just starts there. It starts with the fucking decision to change. You're tired of being broke. Well, hey, let me ask you, bro. Go get a fucking job. Go work. Work 10 jobs. Do what the fuck you got to do to get out of that condition. Get some money in your fucking pocket. So that you know what it feels like to not just scrounge up, barely get by. We, I, I've been there so many fucking times. I've been all of these people. All I've done is just continue to re eradicate parts of me that I didn't like. And I worked on them and I continue to work on them. And I continue to work on them. Why? Because I don't ever want to go back. Mike Tyson, he says the most perfect quote, and I'm going to paraphrase it. But you can look it up for yourself. They ask him. <clears throat> it was in an interview. And hey, if you don't know anything about Mike Tyson, hey, he was the one, one of the most savage, one of the most dangerous, one of the most ruthless boxers of all time. Boxing. Mike Tyson. This guy was scary. He would knock everybody out. And they ask him, you know. Pretty much would be like this. Mike Tyson, like, why? What makes you so dangerous? Like, what makes you a, such a deadly creature? Like, why are, like, how are you wired that way? And I'm paraphrasing, but the words he would say would be like this. He said something like, I'm, I would rather die in the battlefield or in the ring. I would rather die than ever go back to where I come from. So when I'm in the fight, when I'm in the boxing match, that person has to kill me before I, there's any quit in me, before there's any uh, negativity in me. I'm going to fucking go to the end because I would rather go to the end right the fuck here than ever go back to where I come from. And that's the idea. That's the teaching. That right there is the example of this, how to resolve your inner fucking conflict. Hey, just refuse 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 that part of you that you want to get rid of you got to kill it you got to get rid of it it got to fucking go now where do you start how do you start when do you start you start right the fuck now how do you start by changing change is change immediate change is not wait for time to happen things change it does because things change but change is like if you want to change your condition that happens immediately how do you start? Let's say, for example, you're overweight. You want to lose weight right now. Change, starting change means go get rid of all the shit that's in the fucking fridge. And if it's junk food and stuff, get rid of it. You want to make more money? Change is, okay, let's say you work a job and it pays you $18 an hour. Change would be start looking up or researching other jobs in that same field that pay you $25. And then you start to open up flows of opportunity. Change is you don't like where you live because it's a bad environment. Change would mean is you, you look at 
other destinations that you want to live. Look at, you know, how much rent costs over there. Start to look for jobs over there. Start to structure your life where you can just move. You can make it happen in a week. You know, well, I can't do that. Yeah, you can. Yeah, the fuck you can. You can go get a job in a new city within a week. All it takes is a few phone calls. And say, hey, I'm moving from so-and-so to so-and-so. I'm qualified in this and this and this. This is who I am. This is what I do. I wake up every day at 6 a.m. I'm the most disciplined person that you're going to meet, right? Or you sound like you're bragging. No, no, no. I'm certain. When you move with certainty, you're going to get the things that you want. Now, if you want change, you got to move certain and change. You can't pussyfoot in this shit. You want to look different. You want to be different. Hey, it happens immediately. It starts with the decision. So for this idea, how to resolve your inner conflict, that's how you start. You just start. You just go. You just make a change. You don't like something about you. Great. Let's go. And it starts with your inside. It starts with your inside ideas, your inner philosophy of how you're going to no longer be the victim of some story. If there's a complaint inside of you, then, hey, work on you until there's no longer a complaint. If there's some sort of insecurity in you, work on you till there's no more insecurity. There's nothing but security. You're the most secure motherfucker you've ever met. I'm just secure. I know me. I trust me. All right. YouTube, we're done here. I'm going to go back to the live stream and talk to these guys over here. See you.